Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks. In today's episode of Kerbal Engineering, I will be showing you how to build a small exploration lander. <clears throat> this exploration lander will be prom primarily used in my um, interplanetary voyage of exploration where we will be exploring Minmus. So the mission for this lander is to be able to land on Minmus, perform at least three hops um, or three hops and then come back to the orbit with the science. So uh, as uh, for a choice of propellant, I have decided to go with uh, monoprop. So um, <clears throat> there will not be liquid fuel or oxidizer. And as you can see, I'm building rather symmetrical structure with uh, one reaction wheel in the middle and mm, some, well, cargo area. And front and back, there will be basically RCS fuel. Uh, and RCS also thrusters. These thrusters should hopefully, in the ideal case, be enough to be able for the craft to perform vertical takeoff and landing, so it will be actually a VTOL, obviously only on Minmus, and um, there will be some landing legs in the middle should be science. <coughs> so, now I'm using um, struts to basically extend the area where I, where I want the legs, <clears throat> and these are the landing legs, the micro legs, to keep the weight down as much as possible. Uh, by the way, I'll remove this and I'll just copy the legs. I think that's actually more convenient. So, um, we also need to put in some life support, because at least you should be able to, exp while you're exploring, to spend some time. And clearly, if you don't have any foods and supplies, well, you don't have much to explore. So, in the end, I'm adding four of the engines <coughs> that are supposed to be, um, that are uh, RCS powered, but they uh, are, they are pro powered by a monoprop, but they react via the, uh, they react via the regular throttle control. And yes, obviously, RCS, small RCS thrusters up and back so that they keep stability. In the end, I also want to add a docking port because the purpose of this ship would be to go down, take up the science and then go back up and hopefully <coughs> perform the docking and transfer the science. However, mm, the idea is for this small lander also to be reused as a small carbon carbonite probe later on. So when in the future I plan to replace uh, what some of these RCS tanks with maybe carbonite and maybe uh, I'll put in the cargo area just some drills and processing stuff and so on and so on. But I digress. Now, mm, I'm just putting some solar panels and as you can see I'm using the fixed ones because we don't need that much electric charge. This is just enough to keep the <coughs> S stability assist going and the reason why I haven't yet uh, done the rear legs because I will just plain copy these ones, the front ones, when I get them. So I get uh, all the benefits of basically copy paste. So yeah, I'm looking what's my center of mass. And now I'm copying the legs back. I found it to be very good because then you just basically have the same setup front and back. So uh, that's for the core. Now let's load some science on him. Um, since I said like three orbital hops, I'm hoping like four mystery goos, which are basically non-repeatable, and then all the other experiments there should be repeatable. Due to its size, I'm not po being able to put in the science bay, like the material study, but um, <clears throat> because that was mainly due to my tech level restriction. 
I originally thought on posting this as a pa- part of my re-trip to, to Minmus visit, but it turns out that the assemb- I would need to speed up assembly to the point where it would be unrecognizable. And then that is why I have uh, decided to put this episode separately as a part of Kerbal Construction. I will still continue in my um, in my saves to actually edit the craft while I'm sending them. This is more an exception because I thought it would be an interesting side episode. Uh, I will obviously link to this video from the episode where I'm actually showing off and um, going with the lander. In this episode we will assemble the craft and we will perform a simulation just to see that it performs adequately in the orbit around Minmus. So, and here I was trying to copy something but I goofed up so I'll just opt it for, for Control Z and come back with it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so we have four mystery goos and the rest experiments are repeatable. I'm just kind of now going and fixing what my how my solar panels look like basically and now I'm trying to put uh, some experiments so um, surface ablation laser oh, and kind of flipping it the right way can be a bit tedious okay Then what else can we put on there? We can put on this... Um, yeah, this X-ray. Then we have, I believe, some more... Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, seismometer. Those repeatable ones I'll just put on the side, so... Seismometer, too hot, gravioli, and I'm thinking magnetometer, so atmosphere, press mat, barometer, I mean I know that um, we don't need it for um, at the moment, but we might uh, also be using this uh, lander in the future in some other planets once we start going to them. So this is a multi-purpose vehicle that would be able to basically also redock with some stations and landers and stuff. So I thought it would be only convenient to still keep the existing um, keep the existing experiments regardless of the fact that some of them are for the uh, some can be used on Minma, some can't. Its primary use will be obviously the next Minmus mission, but yeah. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, magnetometer is up. I'm just checking my center of mass. And I'm thinking maybe it would be smarter, these big experiments, to put them towards the back. And then towards the front, I'll just put some batteries because I really need the batteries. So. Because we might be going into the areas where we will be long time in the long time in the dark area. So, but the batteries I didn't want to put from both sides, because then I'm basically killing uh, my <laughs> cargo space, and I thought it would be much more handy to use that for a Kerbal attachment system. So, and inside I put like. Right now I'm still not sure what I'm gonna put because of my tech level, but uh, I will for sure be putting here in the future like uh, pipes and struts and stuff. For now I'm just thinking maybe communitron or something like safety light or something like that, something easy. This, the list of the components in will grow, but let's just for the, uh, for the time being, let's uh, put something. Let's see, I'm just thinking what to put. 
I know that on the other side I have a weight of 30, so I'm try trying to find something that I can put for the weight of the 30. And I'm thinking we might need some photovoltaic panels in case some of them like get broken or something. And maybe, let's see. And another battery, just for good measure. Okay, well, this looks good to me. Except for this cargo rack, I'm trying to think if I can put maybe radio wave antenna on top of it would be kind of more convenient. Well, that looks pretty decent. By the way, when you're kind of working on trying to design VTOLs, I found the RCS build date invaluable. And you can see here, if the thrusters are thrusting downwards, the overall momentum will be slightly rotational. So now I'm kind of thinking by flipping these back and forth a little bit, I can maybe impact by repositioning the thrusters uh, that this momentum is not as big. So I'm kind of just thinking out loud, let's see. I'm thinking if I can position it here. Yeah. So as you can see by a clever repositioning of the thrusters, we have gotten a balance craft. And so I'm just sticking a docking port at the end. because I want this craft to be able to re-dock. And as we can see, it has a total of 1,700 Delta V, which I think it's pretty decent for its usage. I really want it to go f move away from the traditional lander design. And here we are performing a simulation. So. Let's see, we are on the dark side. I've enabled the RCS, extending the legs. Okay, the legs work, nice. The RCS system makes this craft very versatile. And Jeb is ever so happy to perform a simulation run. So, the main purpose of this craft will be to go and pick up these couple of science nodes remaining on Minmus. So, I mean, in the previous episode we used the lander and I thought it would be boring just to go in. So I was kind of thinking, well, we will need some small exploration craft in the future. So why not try give it a try on Minmus? However, now we're not going there. We're just trying to test few things. First is the stability, which looks good. And uh, the second part is to test the landing procedure because, as I said, I would like this craft to be a somewhat of a veto. So I will be going down and I will be going completely retrograde. So I'll point up to for the initial slowdown, but for the final landing I'll just flip the aircraft or the spacecraft horizontal, so. Doing the slowdown. Until we get to a decent vertical velocity. Coming down, dropping our altitude. So now I'm just <laughs> trying to figure out which keys <laughs> dictate the vertical thrust and now I'm just thrusting trying to reduce my vertical speed which is still a little bit high it's 11 meters per second so I am slightly concerned but once again this is a simulation I'm kind of hoping by the time we come to impact Minmus we should be going around 7 so that's kind of my hope anyway at least. But let's see. So I am 
thrusting it doesn't have a very high thrust to weight vertically but it should be hopefully enough to slow us down so that we don't crash and I'm counting kind of now a little bit concerned because I'm 10 meters per second and 40 meters up so 9 8 8.5 was the impact and the landing leg like, survived so we made a little bit of a bounce the good thing about this small thruster is that you can also control your horizontal speed so as you can see it works it's landing what I think it needs is few minor modifications what I would ultimately like is to have some sort of landing lights below and um, yeah and it is perfectly capable of as you can see taking off with quite a significant force and yeah so let us return to the editor and apply the small changes okay so now the idea is the first thing what I said I really wanted some lights and the big ones are maybe too heavy but I figured if I take small omni lights and just put them below they should provide nice enough lighting for the craft and um, without completely ruining the whole experience so and as I'm looking down I'm noticing that the there the craft solar panel need a little bit of tweak and fixing so I'll make sure I deal with that as well okay and bottom lights look okay I'm also gonna put some small lights on top here just for illumination purposes and some too small here okay save and yeah I hope you'll like the vessel um, we are coming up on the end of the episode uh, it was a short episode but then the purpose was to build so like if you like the episode and subscribe for more KSP content thank you very much for watching this is Grumfork signing off